halucynogenne substancje robią karierę wśród naukowców. Niektórzy ludzie jednak nie czekają na badaczy, mimo że posiadanie narkotyków grozi więzieniem. Porozmawialiśmy z jednym z hodowców, który grzyby psylocybinowe nazywa swoją prywatną medycyną. Jakbyś mógł opisać, co to jest e, za stworzenie, jakiego gatunku i co to dla Ciebie znaczy? To są grzyby psylocybinowe, gatunku kubańskie, czy ta odmiana nazywa się Golden Ticket. Owo tak rzeczy hoduje i biorą odmianę, ale akurat teraz nie dla nikogo, bo to były pierwsze grzyby, które spróbowałem. Czego w ogóle nie planowałem, jakby zjedzone grzybki przez przypadek, to kończyły się taką bardzo mocną miłością, bardzo wielką miłością do, do tego organizmu. No i od, od tam zaczęła się na przykład taka symbioza. Swoje pierwsze doświadczenie z grzybami, ja stawię na, na jedną półkę z, jakby z najważniejszymi wydarzeniami w moim życiu i mogę na śmiało podzielić moje życie na przy grzybami i po. Generalnie to wyglądało tak, jakby ktoś dał mi tą całą wiedzę, którą już posiadałem do tej pory w sobie, rzucił mi to i powiedział, że to jeszcze raz, tylko teraz takim otwartym umysłem, bez, bez żadnych ram, które jako od dziecka mamy narzucane. Ja tak zacząłem sobie hodować na własne potrzeby, no i sobie znajomy, tak dzielę się, to, to nie jest jakieś tam źródło zarobku, to raczej to jest taka pasja, po prostu no, Taka swoje medycie na prywatne. Taki dar natury, która nam natura dała i skoro pod czymś takim można się czuć dobrze, sobie w taki sposób pomagać, a czemu nie? Nie wszyscy eksperymentatorzy prowadzą badania samodzielnie. Odwiedziliśmy czeską Pragę, gdzie działa organizacja poświęcona psychodelicznej nauce. Czeskie Towarzystwo Psychodeliczne. Poznaliśmy jej działaczy i powody, dla których ludzie łamią prawo i stosują halucynogeny. Let's imagine that our grandmas are watching this. Yes. So, why would you be interested in psychedelic substances? Is this something new? Is this like another party drug, or is there something more to it? Why psychedelics? Well, I believe there are different ways people can go in order to self-discovery and uh, to kind of uh, get uh, okay with themselves and with uh, uh, the environment we are living in. Uh, and psychedelics are definitely one of the way. Every fifth person on uh, the planet will experience mental health issues during the life. It means every one of us knows someone who had already gone through or is going through or will go through some mental health problems. If we look at the numbers, uh, even the uh, World Health Organization was claiming that 90% of people who use drugs are not problematic drug users. It means millions of people are using these substances for Uh, whatever, for fun, for their personal growth, for their uh, personal mental health. When I found out about uh, the enormous, according to me, potential of psychedelics for uh, uh, mental health, uh, I, it kind of blew my mind. Czech Psychedelic Society is an organization that kind of created a community around and uh, it's an uh, itself body, but uh, it definitely supports uh, research itself. But the Psychedelic Research Foundation, Cyrus, is uh, supposed to make a campaign and uh, to collect money from the public, which would go directly to the research. Researchers from the National Institute of Mental Health are Much, many of them are involved in the Czech Psychedelic Society activities. There are uh, different uh, researches going on uh, from uh, um, testing psilocybin on animals to preparing uh, for uh, research of MDMA or uh, psilocybin for palliative care. Uh, this department, they are uh, really resistant patients with resistant depression, which uh, tried many different antidepressants on the market and still are not good. So that's why we are using many other and even experimental approaches to treat depression. And one of them is ketamine and uh, other psychedelics. Still the use of ketamine, uh, there was dogma that uh, all antidepressants need weeks to work 
all the patients will get one ketamine infusion and uh, they will have a lot of psychological measurements but also blood tests before the application of ketamine uh, four days after the application and one week after we will follow up those patients and see who recovered who didn't recover and then we will try uh, to find out if there are any specific characteristics in the blood tests in the patients this sub substance has shown to be effective in resistant depressed patients in 2000. It is well proven in ketamine and some studies in um, psilocybin and LSD show uh, that psychedelics work biologically, that they can enhance uh, synaptogenesis in in the brain, making of new synapses, new connection between the brain cells. When people recover after ketamine, a couple of hours uh, to uh, one day after a ketamine infusion, the changes that we see in their brain are similar to the changes that we see in people after two weeks of successful antidepressant therapy. So uh, initially in around 2001 when I got the first funding it wasn't possible to start with clinical trials so the first research was in, a was in animals. After some years of uh, this uh, experience we applied or my colleague Professor Horacek applied uh, for a first study uh, using ketamine in healthy volunteers. I have decided to also try to submit something uh, brand not typical till these, uh, till these days, and that was the use of uh, illegal psychoactive substances in clinical trials. So we applied for psilocybin, a uh, trial with psilocybin, uh, where we used psilocybin as a model of psychosis. And we got it approved, we got all the licenses, and we started to study psilocybin. And at the same time, we also started to study uh, cannabis. At least some psychedelic substances uh, seem to be uh, effective in treating anxiety and depression, namely uh, psilocybin and LSD. So in 2015 or 2014, in October, we did the first intoxication in Czech Republic after 40 years. We need to improve the setting because, you know, like this is an experimental room. It's a Faraday cage. I don't know if you know that. So it, it's important for getting good, record good EEG signal. The volunteers sit down, take the pills, but there are no pills at the moment, and then drink water. And then we are waiting with them. We are like calm, try to get grounded, not speak so much. One of the, my favorite thing is this which you just turn it out, it sounds like rain. So you know, like the volunteer, if, you, if volunteer hear this strange unexpected sound, it's really like deepen the experience sometimes. Or we can use these things. But we can basically we use the music, the different kinds of music, then they, the volunteers follow the music all the time during the experiment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically that's that's it. That's it. You have to imagine that psychedelics are as Stan Grof said, like non-specific amplifiers, and it means that if you put something, you you have something on the input, the output is just the the amplified input. But usually it's not enough. And uh, in our view, at the moment, it's important to do not just psychedelics, but psychedelic assisted psychotherapy because psychotherapy is something that can induce the change. The research is very, very expensive and simply this is one uh, the disaster we see in, in the, especially in the field of uh, development of new uh, psychiatric drugs. L just look on the Alzheimer's disease uh, since 2000 uh, it was like 200 molecules which was clinically tested, clinically even clinically tested in the patients and no one success. The legislative part is also a humongous obstacle because psychedelic drugs are right now schedule one drugs proven to have no effectivity in uh, human subjects and proven to be highly toxic and 
addictive, which we know that in classic psychedelics like psilocybin and LSD is um, a fantasy, actually. You have to uh, check the transport of the substance from the borders, for example. You have to find the company which can make a substance with the GMP quality. We found one in Germany, but uh, you have to pay for a GMP license and then you have to pay for the transport and for the storage is incredible money. Then you have to check it with authorities all the time. All these things are like takes like years. So for the moment, there are two projects that we are trying to get uh, some budgets, some budget for. One is a study that should study uh, the effects of psilocybin in treatment-resistant depression, and the other one is a uh, expedition which uh, has a goal to uh, study the effects of traditional setting in the Amazon uh, and shamans on the effects of ayahuasca. And we think that we, what can be very useful is to, do, uh, to, to design an application for iPhone uh, and uh, to put, it, put everything inside. So after your psychedelic experience, you can just uh, do a few, few clicks about the experience and answer a few questions on your mobile phone. You can compare it, and then 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 there will be some uh, some recommendation what to do now, or visit a psychotherapist or to uh, to really get as many as, as possible from the experience. It will be very hard again to find the, the money from government for for this. Opuściliśmy Instytut i Pragę, ale psychodeliczny renesans próbuje owocować tam dalej. Psychodeliczną naukę może wesprzeć każdy. While going to the webpage www.cyrusfoundation.eu, uh, you can get to a form uh, where you can uh, send us send us any any uh, financial support to any of these studies. You can dedicate to which of these studies it is. So uh, the information is there on the webpage.